When it comes to prestigiously badged mid-sized executive German cars, traditional thinking used to suggest that estates were fine, but five-door hatchbacks weren't. Audi, however, hasn't made it to the top of the pile by traditional thinking, and in the last decade has turned such thinking on its head with its A5 Sportback, the second generation version of which has been significantly improved here with mild hybrid engineering and a classier, better connected cabin. Plus, of course, as ever, you get a double dose of Vorsprung Dub Technik. Smarter, better connected and more efficient, this improved version of Audi's second generation A5 Sportback aims to offer a much improved proposition. As before, there's coupe styling married to a couple of rear passenger doors and hatchback practicality, plus impressive build quality and cutting edge technology. The original first generation 8T8 series version of this car, launched back in 2010, rather set a trend. It was the first hatchback in the premium badged part of the mid-sized executive segment, the area of the market dominated by models like Audi's A4, uh, BMW's 3 Series and the Mercedes C-Class. Now previously we had seen saloons and estates in that sector but never a hatch. The Gran Turismo style looks of that original A5 Sportback changed that and that car was so successful that BMW was forced to copy its concept with subsequent 3 Series Gran Turismo and 4 Series Gran Coupe models. Audi though reckons that the original is still the best and they aimed to underline that perspective with the second generation A5 Series range which arrived in 2016, a lineup that was mildly updated three years later to create the car we're going to look at here. This design didn't need too much embellishment and it hasn't had it either in the five-door sportback form or in the alternative A5 coupe and convertible body styles that Audi also offers. Uh, the stiff, sophisticated MLB Evo chassis introduced in 2016 continues and that means that this A5 sportback also continues to differ from its most direct BMW 4 Series Grand Coupe rival in its use of a platform primarily based around driving the front rather than the rear wheels. Still, Audi has put a lot of effort into making their setup rewardingly responsive. And of course, as usual, as with BMW, there is four-wheel drive available further up the range if you want it. We mentioned the changes made to the improved version of this Mark II model were mild. Uh, that doesn't mean they're not significant though. Now this revised front grille hints at the improvements which have taken place behind it and they're mostly based around the adoption of Audi's mild hybrid engineering tech. Now that also features, by the way, in the powerful six-cylinder diesel unit that's now adopted for the sporting S5 variant. And there are important changes inside too, with a brand new modular infotainment platform that's accessed via a larger and much more sophisticated 10.1 inch MMI touchscreen. Lots to talk about then, let's put this car to the test. So what's Audi's idea of how a Gran Turismo style of car of this size should drive? Well, very luxury orientated as you'd expect, certainly downsizing into an A5 Sportback from Audi's larger GT, the A7 Sportback, wouldn't be too taxing. In terms of what's uh, been changed here, the key thing is Audi's adoption of mild hybrid engine technology almost right across the board. Uh, there's also a new 2 litre entry level petrol engine and a diesel now powers the S5 variants which, like the other Quattro A5s, uh, gets a faster acting four wheel drive system. Otherwise, uh, the engineering of this improved version of the second generation A5 Sportback is much as it was when we first saw it back in 2016. And given that, there are a few fundamentals we need to start with in describing to you the engineering and handling dynamics of this car. For Audi, there are lots of advantages in being able to platform share with other designs in the Volkswagen Empire, but 
One of the drawbacks of that approach is that the brand can only offer buyers in the mid-sized executive segment a choice of front or four-wheel drive. Now, given that this model's arch rival, the BMW 4 Series Grand Coupe, prefers a more dynamic rear-driven formula, as do the more conventionally bodied rivals from Mercedes, Alfa Romeo and Jaguar, you might expect that to be something of a handicap to A5 Sportback sales in a sector which is supposed to prioritise a more involving at-the-wheel experience. Interestingly, in the past at least, that has rarely been the case. Partly this is because, uh, in reality, typical buyers don't uh, actually care very much about that issue. And partly it's because Ingolstadt's engineers have got very good at cleverly moving weight around the car to give it more of the feel its rivals have. They did that again in developing their second generation design, uh, helped by this Mark II model's integration of a light, stiff MLB Evo platform, which significantly reduced curb weight by around 120 kilos. That's enough to make this car feel quite a lot more agile than the pre-2016 predecessor did. Uh, driving this facelifted version has reminded us of that, while also emphasizing that this car is still not quite as rewarding to drive as its primary BMW rival, something out says is quite intentional. Uh, overwhelmingly, customer requests for this Mark II model have always demanded a more comfort orientated car, so this A5 Sportback has been designed to suit that remit. Hence the impressively hushed levels of refinement that are on offer here and the supple ride too, and that's courtesy of a fully independent five-link front and rear suspension arrangement that's still good enough to match or surpass the highest class standards. We think the standard comfort dynamic version of the suspension is very good indeed. So it is disappointing that Audi no longer offers buyers of S-Line trim models like this one uh, the no-cost option of switching to it. S-Line variants are the most popular ones in the range, but now they come non-negotiably with firmer passive sports suspension lowered by 23 millimeters. So try before you buy it. Uh, with pre-facelift uh, Mark II A5 Sportbacks, that wasn't so much of an issue because because it was possible to pay extra for adaptive damping if you wanted a more absorbent ride. Now though, the adaptive sport suspension setup in question is restricted only to the extremely pricey Vorsprung trim level and it's not available as an option, which means that in most versions of this Audi, the usual drive select driving mode system won't be altering ride quality in this car at all. Instead, via efficiency, comfort, auto, dynamic and individual settings, it restricts its to tweaking the steering feel, uh, the throttle response and the gear shift timings of the 7-speed S-Tronic automatic transmission that all mainstream A5s now have to have. Uh, like other testers, we found this S-Tronic box to be a bit slow to respond when instant acceleration is needed. Uh, Audi does need to work on that. Previously, the base 35 TFSI petrol version of this car used a downsized 1.4 litre TSI unit, but as part of the changes made here, and perhaps in an effort to distance this car from the similarly engineered Volkswagen Passat, Audi has swapped out that power plant for a detuned 2 litre TFSI turbo with the same 150 PS power output, but 20 newton metres more pulling power. Uh, the straight performance stats haven't changed very much though. Uh, rest to 62 in 9.1 seconds on the way to 130 mph. That sounds reasonable until you take note of the fact that the same money would buy you a BMW 420i Grand Coupe with nearly 35 PS more and that would get you to 62 around a second and a half quicker. Perhaps that matters to you if you're a typical A5 Sportback buyer though, probably it doesn't. What is significant is that, like virtually all the engines in the revised A5 Sportback lineup, the 35 TFSI unit gets the brand's latest MHEV mild hybrid technology. The technology here is very similar to that that features in the 48 volt version of this setup that Audi's lately introduced into its more recent larger models. So there's an integrated 
BAS belt alternator starter generator that with four cylinder engines powers a 12 volt main electrical setup in which a compact lithium ion battery and the boot stores energy harvested via a KERS or kinetic energy recovery system. That additional electricity might be used either to boost the engine while accelerating or to restart it when the stop start system kicks in at low speeds. Or that surplus energy might be directed to help power ancillary functions instead. Now Audi's overall objective here wasn't to provide Prius-like periods of all-electric driving, but instead to make its engines more efficient via smoother transitions between driving, cruising and resting. Uh, the technology is so seamlessly built into these powertrains that you'll rarely notice it. The only time that you might is at cruising speeds when you lift off the accelerator and you find that the engine drops right down to an idle and that enables you to cover significant distances without using fuel. There is certainly no fancy graphics, uh, nor do you have to press any buttons or plug anything in. Of course, you might want the option of plugging a car of this kind in, but for that, uh, well, you might have to wait until the next generation version of this A5 arrives. In the interim, the MHEV engines you can have in this car look more than capable of competitively sustaining the second generation version of this car for the remainder of its production life. Uh, now we're going to run you through them. There are two remaining petrol options that we haven't yet mentioned. Uh, they both use more powerful versions of that 2 litre TFSI engine. The 40 TFSI variant we're trying here puts out 190 PS and makes 62 from rest in 7.2 seconds on route to 152 miles an hour. Uh, the 45 TFSI that only comes with quattro four-wheel drive it improves those stats to 5.6 seconds and 155 mph. All well and good, but if you're a typical A5 Sportback buyer, you might well still be up for bucking the current environmental zeitgeist and wanting a diesel. Well, in its four-cylinder TDI range, Audi offers the Volkswagen Group's latest two-litre diesel. That's offered in the 35 TDI variant, which uses that engine and 163 PS state of tune. That's enough to get you to 62 in 8.4 seconds en route to 130 miles an hour. There is also a 40 TDI variant which offers 190 PS and only comes with quattro four-wheel drive, but this is an older generation unit so it can't be fitted with a mild hybrid tech. Uh, that makes uh, 62 in 7 seconds on the way to 130 mph. That covers the four-cylinder A5 Sportback range. For a six-cylinder version of this car, though, you'll need one of the two seriously sporting models, probably the S5. Uh, previously, that dynamic derivative featured three-litre twin-turbo TFSI petrol power, but as with the S4, the S6 and S7 models, the brand's now switched to the uh, three-litre TDI diesel. It's here provided with 347 PS, and it's fitted out with an electric compressor, which facilitates near instantaneous throttle response and virtually seamless acceleration uh, with 700 Nm of torque. All Audi's uh, V6 TDI engines use an 8-speed Tiptronic Auto gearbox instead of the usual 7-speed S-Tronic Auto. And in the case of the S5 TDI, if you're quick with the steering wheel paddle shifters, you'll be able to work with it to dispatch that sprint time in just 4.9 seconds en route to a top speed that has to be artificially limited at 155 miles an hour. The only second generation A5 Sportback model that's quicker is the ballistically fast RS5 Sportback. That uses a 2.9 litre twin turbo V6 petrol motor putting out 450 PS. Now this gets to 62 in just 3.9 seconds and it can hit the limiter at 155 miles an hour on a race circuit but it's just as happy collecting your dry cleaning. That car doesn't share much with an ordinary A5 Sportback, apart perhaps from the core elements of the much improved Quattro four-wheel drive system that, as we said, is fitted to the 45 TFSI and 40 TDI models. Now this can shunt torque around between front and rear axles to suit the grip available. 
Conventionally, it apportions power with a 60% bias towards the rear, but should the need arise, up to 70% of torque can be transferred to the front or up to 85% to the rear. Even without four-wheel drive, though, once you get used to the rather over-assisted steering feel, it's possible to drive this car surprisingly quickly through a set of bends if you really want to. Uh, well, in dry conditions anyway, it is beautifully balanced with very little body roll and superb traction aided by a torque control system that's able to transfer power to the front wheel that can best use it in hard cornering. But this car is better suited to highway use where the superb refinement that we mentioned earlier really comes into its own. At speed, noise suppression is so good that it's virtually impossible to know whether a petrol or a diesel engine beats beneath the bonnet. If long dual carriageway distances punctuated by urban commutes are going to be a regular diet of A5 Sportback ownership, you'd ideally want the optional adaptive cruise control with stop and go and traffic jam assist package. On the highway, this will manage most of your driving duties for you with minimal driver input. Plus, when you reach the urban sprawl, the traffic jam assist bit will also free you up in uh, slow to medium speed queues and allow the car to automatically break brake, accelerate and steer for you at speeds of up to 37 miles an hour. It's a kind of technology that you'd expect from an Audi and it uh, uh, proves that this one still has what's needed to take on new arrivals. Imagine what an Audi A4 saloon might look like if it had a hatchback, it was slightly wider and lower, and it had an A5 coupe nose, and you're pretty much picturing this Sportback model. To be fair, you wouldn't necessarily immediately guess its A4 ancestry from a casual glance. Uh, this design, although it's just seven millimeters longer than that car, is a significant 41 millimeters lower, and it has the A5 coupe model's wavy waistline and frameless doors. In this evolved form, the second generation version of the A5 Sportback has a slightly more sophisticated feel and almost everywhere you look there's a chamfered surface or an intricately fashioned part that's clearly been carefully considered and then carefully considered all over again. Get up close and personal and there's plenty to catch the eye in a shape that features a few detail changes, mainly here at the front. Uh, the single frame honeycomb grille, this is wider and flatter and above it, as with other current models, uh, now sit ventilation slits referencing the classic Audi Sport Quattro from 1984. A bold blade forms the lower edge of the bumper and it features larger corner inlets and they're trimmed with uh, matte aluminium inlays on this S-line trimmed variant. The slim headlights, uh, they are now exclusively of the full LED variety and they can be specified with Audi's clever Matrix LED headlamp system where 18 LEDs shine through two lenses creating several million light distribution variations which constantly change depending on ambient conditions and the position of other road users. Let's move to the side where these revised lowered side sills, emphasised by the S-Line trim model's 23mm reduction in ride height, aims to provide a slimmer appearance. As before, the styling sets out to be curvaceously coupe-like with a low roof height which aids a sleek 0.26 CD drag factor. To help here, the A-pillars are set right back and the front mirrors sit on the doors just above this three-dimensional piece of chrome trim. Uh, this pronounced upwardly slanting lower crease gives the flanks some shape and they separate wheel arches with alloy rims that are generally a size larger than they were before. Uh, the rims are either 18, 19 or 20 inches depending on trim. We have the 19 inch five spoke Cavo style alloys here. Changes at the rear are limited to uh, this smarter diffuser that's inset with trapezoidal tailpipes and that's there to make the car appear wider and bespoke trimmed in matte titanium black with a matte aluminium trim strip on this S-Line variant. Uh, as before, slim three-dimensional LED rear lights stretch into a tailgate that's topped by a subtle spoiler and that aims to further emphasise the lower, wider theme. Uh, these separate reflectors down here in the lower part of 
of the apron aim to do the same thing. Of course, as usual, uh, what is rather more important is the stuff that you can't see, and that's principally the light, strong MLB Evo platform uh, that allowed the original version of this Mark II model to shed up to 85 kilos of weight in comparison to its predecessor. So, time to pull back the frameless door, which endorses this model's Gran Turismo style aspirations, and take a seat inside. And you'll find yourself in a cabin that, as before, we think will really sell you this car. Now, unfortunately, you don't get the belt buckler system that graciously hands you your belt buckle as you take a seat, uh, as you get in a comparable A5 coupe. But in every other regard, the front seat experience here is exactly the same as it would be in that two-door model. Now, one of the few things that motoring experts agree upon is that Audi really sets the standard by which other automotive interiors have to be judged and this one is as usual very very difficult to criticize unless of course you feel inclined to bemoan the fact that the uh, basic design here is exactly the same as that of your local middle manager's a4 saloon still that does mean it benefits from that model's most recent package of changes primarily based on the installation of a much more sophisticated infotainment system accessed via this bigger 10.1 inch central screen Otherwise, the dash is much as before. It features an almost unbroken line of air vents that stretch from one side of the fascia to the other, sitting above a 3D trim inlay panel, uh, usually as here, featuring some sort of brushed aluminium finish. Uh, the centre console area has been visually separated away to give the upper area of the dash more of a floating feel, and small details add to the feeling of quality, like the touch switches for the three-zone climate control, and the way that the temperature displays have been incorporated into the ventilation system's rotary dials. If you owned the original version of this second generation A5 Sportback, it's that larger central screen that you'll notice first. And it's a vast improvement on the previous rather small display that before was either 7 or 8.3 inches, depending on how much you'd paid. The introduction of this more sophisticated monitor reflects this car's adoption of Audi's latest MIB3 media platform, or parts of it anyway. Uh, because this isn't an all-new design, there's no useful lower 8.6-inch screen of the kind that the MIB3 setup does deliver in the brand's larger models, but... As with those cars, the upper screen relies almost entirely on acoustic touch functionality and voice control. So there's no longer any place for the old rotary controller down by the gear stick that used to make it so easy to access uh, particular infotainment screen functions without taking your eyes off the road. We can't help thinking that this is a backward step. Still, the menu structure is better, the graphics are a big improvement, and navigation is now standard across the range, as is the usual Audi smartphone interface, which is compatible with the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto handset mirroring systems. You'd have to pay extra for that on a competing Mercedes model in this segment, and with a rival BMW 4 Series Grand Coupe, there's eventually a subscription to pay for smartphone mirroring after a period of free use. Now, unlike the old MMI monitor, the most important radio, media, telephone and nav functions are dealt with by tile apps that you can move around with the kind of uh, drag and drop functionality that you'll be used to from your smartphone or by what Audi calls natural language voice control, which does work better than it did before, but is still nothing like as intuitive as the competing Hey BMW or Hey Mercedes systems. And the next generation A5 will get back on terms with these rivals by integrating a version of the superior setup in the latest Mark 8 Volkswagen Golf. It's a pity that we couldn't have had that here, though. We're also a touch irritated that Audi still hasn't addressed uh, a failing of the previous MMI setup, that the radio takes about 10 seconds to initialize every time you turn on the engine. 
Still, Audi Connect media connectivity makes up for a lot, even if you have to pay a subscription to get it after three months of use, which, to be fair, is a caveat that also applies to some advanced media features in rival models. Amongst other things, uh, the Connect package delivers online media streaming, uh, a Google Points of Interest search function, uh, a comprehensive Audi online traffic information system, plus there are news and weather feeds, via a Wi-Fi hotspot, which supports the super-fast LTE advanced mobile data network. And it also includes access to a whole portfolio of so-called Carter X services driven by a vehicle swarm exchange of information system. Now, that will see your A5 sending data on driving conditions back to a central hub, which it then shares with other drivers. As a result, a Connect-equipped A5 can warn you in more detail about dangerous road conditions, uh, traffic hazards and parking issues in your place of destination. The other screen you'll be interfacing with in this car is the one you view through this magnesium-framed three-spoke wheel. Uh, Audi fitted this 12.3-inch configurable virtual cockpit display previously in this A5, but on most models it was a pricey extra. Now it's standard across the lineup, and here as usual it works with two selectable layouts activated by this steering wheel view button here. There is a classical view that prioritises a couple of prominent dials separated by an information screen and there's an infotainment mode which shrinks the pair of gauges to allow more central space for various data readouts, uh, trip computer, media or phone settings or a full width navigation map. Uh, the only slight issue we have with the virtual cockpit package is that you can't use the navigational part of it if you're using outside sat-nav systems through your phone such as Waze. Uh, otherwise though this setup still represents a class benchmark for digital instrument clusters of this kind. You're perfectly positioned to view all this information uh, by supportive chairs that are anatomically shaped and feature embellishments that you'd have to pay extra for on rivals, things like heating and lumbar support. Plus, they come with standard leather upholstery too, or leather and Alcantara in the case of this S-Line trim model, which certainly adds to the very upmarket ambiance that's served up here. Uh, wherever you look, touch or feel, there are treats, the buttons click nicely, the column stalks feel good, and those low-rent plastics that you'd find further down in most premium rivals are noticeable by their absence. The only real oversight is the lack of a lid for these twin cup holders in front of the gear stick. Frontward visibility is fine, but your over-the-shoulder view is slightly compromised by the sloping rear C and D pillars, as is the case with a rival BMW 4 Series Grand Coupe in the segment. So it's fortunate that all-round parking sensors and a reversing camera are standard fit. Storage space could be better. You don't get this useful cubby down here by the driver's right knee or a lock for the glove box unless you pay extra for the storage package. And that glove box, uh, which does include a pen clip, isn't especially big, so it's annoying that it's needlessly compromised by uh, attachment packaging for media features that most owners won't specify. Uh, plus, the door bins are slim and the console box between the front seats is rather shallow, although it does actually incorporate operate a USB port and it's a proper USB-A1 and space for a wireless charging mat. Plus, it's topped by an armrest that neatly ratchets up to your preferred elbow height. Something had to fill the centre console area ahead of the gear stick where the old uh, MMI rotary controller used to reside. Rather unimaginatively, we've got this lidded compartment which is too small for anything other than a few coins. Ahead of that is a small storage tray that's presumably intended for your phone uh, because it incorporates 12 volt and USB ports next to the starter button. Uh, Audi has forgotten to incorporate an overhead sunglasses compartment, but there is a tiny coin tray by the center console's volume knob and a ticket clip on the driver's sun visor here. Time to take a seat in the rear. The expected signs that the room on offer back here will be slightly compromised compared to a boxier Audi A4. Start with the need to duck slightly to avoid the swept back coupe roofline. 
And once inside, that sleeker profile does indeed sacrifice a little headroom compared to a conventional premium mid-sized model, especially when a panoramic glass roof has been fitted. Still, those of average height should be fine, and the improvements in uh, cabin space incorporated into the original version of this second-generation A5 design help this Audi when it comes to leg space. One tall adult can certainly sit behind another in reasonable comfort, although there's not quite as much room uh, to stretch out as there is in a rival BMW 4 Series Grand Coupe and this car's other most direct GT-style hatch segment rival, the Volkswagen Artian, is positively limo-like in comparison. There is a centre seat belt, which might sound an obvious thing to say until we reference for you the fact that the pre-2016 first generation version of this model could only seat two back here. Not that you'll be using this central belt very much, given that this huge central transmission tunnel makes it very difficult for anyone over school age to sit in the middle of this bench. Nice touches include digital climate control buttons, this lovely Alcantara door card trimming, and the central armrest with a a neat lidded compartment. Now if you paid extra for this storage package this armrest will feature pop-out cup holders and you'll get uh, these netted seat back pockets too. Small side bins also offer somewhere to keep small items from rattling around. Finally let's take a look in the boot. You access it via a standard powered tailgate which can be optionally specified to rise with a swipe of your foot beneath the bumper and that's very useful if you're approaching the car laden down with bags. Uh, once the hatch raises a class competitive 480 litre capacity is revealed and that's the same as you get in an A4 saloon but it's 25 litres less than you'll get in an A4 Avant. It's probably more relevant to observe though that there's plenty of room for two large suitcases and for two sets of golf clubs. All A5s get this underfloor compartment uh, that no longer includes a standard space saver spare wheel though. Uh, go for the optional storage pack we referenced earlier and useful touches include the tensioning straps to netted side areas and the cargo net which when it's attached to these four chromed tie down points will stop smaller items from flying around. Uh, the cargo sidewalls feature rather flimsy bag hooks too. Audi offers a 40-20-40 split fold arrangement for the rear seat back as a standard feature on the A5 models and that means that you can push through long items like skis without disturbing rear seated occupants. Uh, when you completely push forward both outer sides of the rear backrest. You don't get a completely flat cargo bay, but the area freed up will offer 1,300 litres of carriage capacity. From the launch of the facelifted version of this second generation A5, pricing kicked off from around £37,000. That's a bit of a price jump from the starting point before, but it's purely reflective of the fact that with the very cheapest models, Audi no longer offers poverty spec SE trim or the option of sticking with any sort of manual gearbox. All mainstream A5 Sportbacks now feature seven speed S Tronic automatic transmission as standard, and your trim options now start with Sport and then progress up through this S-Line variant to plush Vorsprung spec. Most versions of this car leave the showroom priced in the 40 to 50,000 pound bracket, although if you want the sporting S5, your spend is likely to be closer to around 52,000, and even more if you want a higher spec. Uh, there is also the frantically fast RS5 Sportback model with 450 PS, and that's priced close to 68,000 pounds, although that's not our focus here. Right, let's drill down into the detail a little. Uh, A5 Sportback customers choosing in the volume part of the range who don't want the base 35 TFSI petrol powered 150 PS model will need just over £2,000 more to graduate to the base 163 PS diesel, the 35 TDI. Uh, both those power plants have in this revised model range been enhanced with Audi's 12 volt MHEV mild hybrid technology as has a 2 litre TFSI petrol engine of the 40 
TFSI petrol model we're trying here. A 190 PS variant, which, like the two powertrains I just mentioned, only comes in front-driven form. The other 190 PS A5 derivative is the 40 TDI diesel, which only comes with quattro four-wheel drive. And that partly explains why asking prices for that version start up at around £42,000. The 40 TDI power plant, by the way, is the only unit in the mainstream range that's not available with mild hybrid technology. And apparently that's because it's from an older engine generation. Plusher A5 trim levels also offer the option of a faster petrol unit, the highly tuned 2-litre power plant, which features in the 245 PS 45 TFSI Quattro derivative. That might be a good choice for any potential buyers who don't like the top S5 model switch from petrol to 347 PS diesel power. Enough on A5 Sportback range structure, uh, let's now look at the value proposition here and before we start comparing to other brands, let's position the A5 within Audi's own lineup for you. Now there's a premium of around £1,500 to choose this A5 Sportback rather than an equivalent five-door Audi A4 Avant Estate with like-for-like -like specification. Uh, the other way to go in this sector, of course, is to opt for an SUV. Uh, for the lower-powered A5 engines, uh, you're comparison point there would be with Audi's Q3 Sportback. Now that costs around £4,000 less than a comparable A5 Sportback, but obviously that is a slightly smaller car. For the higher powered A5 units, well, then your point of comparison would be with a Q5 Sportback. Now that typically, in like-for-like -like spec, would cost around, uh, well, around about the same as the equivalent A5 Sportback. On to rivals, and one in particular, the BMW 4 Series Grand Coupe, the competitor that tends to be the top of most prospective A5 Sportback customers' alternative wish lists. The two cars start at much the same kind of price point, but the BMW offers slightly more power in like-for-like -like comparisons, although the difference is fairly marginal. Audi counters that by pointing out that residual values for the A5 Sportback have the edge. Ultimately, the choice between these two models will really come down to your your thoughts on the styling and to uh, personal preference. Uh, the Audi has a nicer cabin, the BMW counters with an enthusiast orientated rear wheel drive setup. It depends what you want. The other most direct segment competitor for a GT-style model of this sort is Volkswagen's Arteon, uh, comparable versions of which would save you around £5,000 over this Audi. But many A5 Sportback customers will feel that that VW lacks the badge equity they require. Now, we used to mention Kia's Stinger in A5 Sportback comparisons too, but that premium GT-style five-door hatch model is now only available in a top GTS V6 petrol form which would save you nearly £6,000 over an A5 Sportback 45 TFSI Quattro with 100 PS less, but that's a Kia. Uh, a more likely alternative for the buyer of this Ingolstadt model would be a sportily trimmed Mercedes C-Class Estate AMG line model, uh, and that would probably cost you around about the same, or conceivably a sporty looking premium segment mid-sized saloon like Alfa Romeo's Giulia and Jaguar's XE. Now they would save you a little, but they don't have this Audi's hatch practicality or its GT style feel. Enough. Let's say you've looked at the various alternatives and you've decided that an A5 Sportback is indeed what you want. Should that be the case, uh, then your decision might finally be swayed Ingolstadt's way if you were to be convinced that this Audi held a slight advantage in terms of the standard kit being offered for the money. And that might well now be the case because with this facelifted model, quite a lot extra has been added into the entry-level models. Uh, these are things that you'd have to pay extra for before, like the 12.3 inch virtual cockpit instrument binnacle display. There's also heated front seats, a navigation system, a rear view camera, power folding auto dimming heated mirrors, full LED headlights and a bigger wheel size. That's in addition to a more sophisticated standard of infotainment and the roster of features that were fitted before, all of which we'll run through for you now. 
Let's start with the base sport level of trim. Now even here you're pretty generously treated as you'd have a right to expect for the kind of prices that are now being asked. Now we just mentioned a few standard items that you might not have expected to find fitted as standard at this end of the range. Uh, to those you can add 18 inch five spoke wheels with sports bumpers and side skirts, silver tailpipe trims, a body coloured finish for the door handles and for the side sills and a titanium black finish with silver highlights for the front grille, for the front air inlets and the rear diffuser. Uh, there is also an acoustic windscreen, auto headlamps and wipers, front and rear parking sensors, LED rear tail lamps, an alarm and a power operated tailgate. Inside, Sportspec gives you front sport seats, twin leather upholstery, uh, aluminium ellipse silver trim inlays, the Audi phone box uh, wireless charging mat and an LED interior lighting pack. There is also the Audi Drive Select driving mode system and a 40-20-40 split rear bench. Perhaps the most important piece of standard interior equipment fitted across the A5 range though is this car's high-end infotainment package. Audi calls it MMI Navigation Plus with MMI Touch. To operate it all, uh, the improved version of this second generation A5 borrows from the new generation MIB3 infotainment platform that we first saw in the fourth generation A8 saloon, or borrows from part of it anyway, uh, specifically the high-mounted centre dash 10.1 inch screen with its more sophisticated graphics, its acoustic feedback and natural language voice control. Now this setup's uh, intelligent 3D navigation system is able to take into account traffic congestion and previously driven routes, uh, also to brief you on filling stations and parking places on your route and include 3D graphic models of many European cities. The MMI package also includes voice recognition which is able to connect with the cloud-based Amazon voice service Alexa. And there's an eight speaker DAB audio system and the usual smartphone interface which hooks you up with the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto phone mirroring connectivity systems which are included here but which would cost extra and or be subject to a subscription with most rivals. Uh, talking of subscriptions, let's tell you that as an included part of the MMI system, you'll get three months free use of the Audi Connect Media Connectivity Package. Now, you will pay a subscription for those services if you want to continue with them after that point, and you might well want to. Uh, Audi Connect works via an embedded SIM card, which is permanently installed in the car and which operates on a data flat rate, so you won't be stung with high roaming charges if you do a bit of uh, intercontinental motoring. Uh, the setup also comes with an LTE data transmission module and that establishes high-speed 4G Internet 3 access and it creates in your A5 a Wi-Fi hotspot and that supports the super-fast LTE advanced mobile data network. It also allows you to navigate with images from Google Earth, uh, to access a Google points of interest search function with voice control and use a web radio setup with stations from from all around the world. Uh, through the Connect system, you can also access special in-car versions of your Facebook and your Twitter pages, and it's possible to read, write, and send text messages and emails. Uh, the included online media streaming package that will give you access to millions of music tracks, and there's also a clever Audi online traffic information system. Now that uses live traffic information to reroute you around jams. Also built into Audi Connect is the Carter X services system that the brand's developed in partnership with Daimler and BMW. Now that allows this Audi to often almost magically respond to future weather or traffic conditions or to somehow know what's around the next corner. It's not magic, of course. Uh, the setup is instead driven by a mobile phone supported so-called vehicle swarm exchange of information system, which will see your A5 sending data on driving conditions back 
back to a central hub, which then shares it with other drivers. As a result, this car can offer a whole host of clever features, including online traffic sign and hazard information and an on-street parking search function too. Uh, unfortunately for the UK anyway, uh, you can't have our favourite car to X feature, and that's traffic light information functionality. Although, you might find that you can use that if you travel with your A5 to the various European cities where it has been activated. Now with this, uh, when you're sitting in town at a red light, the instrument cluster uh, can then display a speed recommendation for you for when you move off, and that will perfectly coordinate with uh, when the next traffic light that you come across turns to green. So when you're traversing a city, uh, you won't absolutely have to be constantly stopping and starting. It's a really brilliant piece of technology. What else? Uh, well, you can take Audi Connect connectivity with you even when you're not with your A5 Sportback, thanks to the improved My Audi app. Now, this transmits points of interest to the navigation system, uh, it streams music, and it can transfer your calendar to the MMI infotainment screen. The app also allows you to seamlessly plan a route across multiple devices. So, if you're going to a restaurant in an unfamiliar city, for example, and you have to park a few streets away from the venue, uh, navigation will continue with you on your smartphone as you complete the journey on foot. Uh, finally, as usual, with vehicle apps of this sort, uh, you can also use it to get a vehicle status report and to lock or unlock the doors from wherever you are. All of that comes as standard with base sport trim, but most A5 customers opt to find the extra to move on to the mid-range S-line spec we're trying here. This adds in larger 19-inch five-spoke cabo design wheels, rear privacy glass, and a sport styling pack, which includes S-line themed bumpers and side skirts and a body-colored front spoiler lip, plus a matte black finish for the rear diffuser, the front side inlets, and for the honeycomb structured front grille. At this level in the range, uh, you also get intelligent Audi matrix headlamps with dynamic beam adjustment, dynamic scrolling rear indicators and sport suspension which is lowered by 23 millimeters. Uh, the cabin of an S-Line spec A5 meanwhile is lifted by smarter leather and Alcantara upholstery, matte brushed aluminium trim, a black cloth headliner, uh, stainless steel pedals, illuminated door sill plates, a gear knob in black perforated leather, contrast stitching around the cabin, and an S-Line branded three-spoke sports steering wheel with paddle shifters. Is it worth finding the extra cash for the top Vore Sprung flagship level of trim? Well, we're talking a big price jump up from, say, this S-Line spec model, but if you were thinking of heavily embellishing this car anyway, it might be one worth making because uh, with a Vore Sprung variant, you'll find that virtually every significant option box will have been ticked for you, and that includes features that you uh, can't specify as options elsewhere in the range. Things like uh, adaptive damping and an extended leather pack. Uh, that coats the top of the dash in stitched hide. Inevitably, the Vorsprung embellishment includes a lot of luxury niceties, 20-inch, uh, five V-spoke style wheels, a Bang & Olufsen 3D sound system, grey oak inlays and heat for the outer rear seats, along with power adjustment and memory settings and a massaging function for the front chairs. Plus, there's also a multicolored extended LED interior lighting pack, Audi beam puddle lights, a panoramic glass roof, a head-up display, and advanced key keyless entry. Plus, a 360-degree surround view camera system with a park assist setup too, and that steers you into spaces. Uh, there is also some extra camera safety and autonomous driving tech that we'll cover off in just a few moments. So, if you're still with us, we've covered what you'll get with all the mainstream A5 Sport back trim levels, Sport, S-Line and Vore Sprung. Uh, that leaves only the minority interest, special standard O models in the range that we mentioned earlier, the S5 and the RS5. As you'd expect, the S5 version of this car has its own specific specification with, amongst other things, special S-Sport suspension, an enhanced braking system, a special body kit with silver door mirror housings, 
trims, nappa leather trims, super sport seats and S instrument dials. S5 Sportback buyers who want to go further can of course embellish things with plusher Vorsprung trim and it is that top Vorsprung spec that most closely mirrors the kind of equipment that you'll get in the top RS5 super hatch variant. Although, as we said earlier, that isn't our focus here. On to options. Now, rather than paying the huge premium for the top Vorsprung level of trim that we've just been telling you about, uh, most buyers will instead probably opt for a more affordable model like this one and then add in the optional comfort and sound pack. For around £1,400 more, uh, that gets you four of the key Vorsprung features. Uh, the 3D Bose 19 speaker, 755 watt sound system, the 360 degree camera package, the advanced key keyless entry setup and the multicoloured LED interior lighting pack. You can make your A5 feel even more like a Vorsprung spec model by paying extra for a panoramic glass sunroof too. And with an S-Line model, you can add in a flat-bottomed three-spoke steering wheel if you want one. On to practicalities. Uh, we'd want the storage package, which gives you a lockable glove box, a cubby by the driver's right knee, front seat back pockets, uh, cup holders in the rear armrest, and for the boot, netted storage compartments, a bag hook, a 12 volt socket, and a cargo net. You might also want USB C converter leads, all weather floor mats, a luggage compartment box, a protective shell for the cargo area, a dash cam, or even an espresso mobile coffee maker, which will fit into to the cup holder. Uh, make sure that on a front driven TDI diesel model uh, you tick the box for the no cost option of the larger 54 litre fuel tank which all the Quattro and the TFSI petrol variants feature. Uh, on a TDI we'd also want to make the nominal £60 payment for the larger 24 litre AdBlue tank that's doubled in size over the standard one. You can add a carrier unit with transverse roof rails which will enable you to add racks for bicycles, kayaks skis, snowboards and luggage boxes. A folding tow bar is also available, although it's rather pricey at around £1,000. If you do have that, then you can also add a trailer hitch mounted carrier for up to three bikes. On to aesthetics. Now, unless you want your A5 Sportback painted in solid Ibis white, you'll need to be paying your Audi Centre more for your choice of paint colour. Uh, beyond that, there's one more extra cost solid shade, turbo blue, and then four metallic shades, plus the Pearl Effect metallic Daytona grey shade before you get onto the fearsomely expensive range of Audi exclusive paint finishes. Uh, there are no extra cost wheel designs, and uh, inside, there are LED entry light options and you can upgrade the upholstery to softer, fine Nappa leather. The S5 models all come with Nappa leather and here there are three colour options, black, grey or if you're a bit of an extrovert, magma red. Uh, enough with optional features, let's move on now to look at safety. Even the most basically specified A5 Sportback will come properly provided for in this respect with, as you'd expect, an autonomous braking system. Audi calls its setup Presense City. Uh, this is one of those setups which constantly scans the road ahead in search of potential accident hazards. In this case, it works at up to 52 miles an hour. If it detects something that might cause a collision, uh, you'll be warned. If you don't receive respond or you perhaps aren't able to, then the system will automatically brake the car and it should be able to avoid an impact at speeds under 19 miles an hour. If you are going faster than that, the Presense City system will reduce your speed to soften the impending impact. Uh, if you do hit something and then you panic, a standard multi-collision brake assist system will automatically take over the braking duties to avoid the possibility of skidding and further collisions. As for more common standard safety features, well, all versions of this car also get the Audi Connect safety and service package, which uh, will automatically alert the emergency services with your exact GPS location if the airbags go off. Uh, you can also tick off Isofix charge seat fastenings, anti-whiplash head restraints, a pedestrian-friendly bonnet, and a tyre pressure loss indicator, plus twin front, side, and curtain airbags. In addition, uh, as expected, 
expect it in this segment, there is a complete roster of electronic acronyms. Uh, that includes the usual electronic assistance for braking, traction and stability control. Uh, there is also a rest recommendation feature. Now that will monitor your driving reactions for drowsiness and it will alert you, uh, if necessary, to stop for a restorative coffee. On uphill junctions, you'll be glad of a hill hold assist feature, which stops you from drifting backwards. It's also possible to go further, and should you want extra peace of mind, then your Audi sales centre person will doubtless point you towards the awkwardly named Driver Assistance Pack Tour Package that we mentioned earlier. Now, you won't be able to have this with the most affordable sport trimmed levels. Uh, you won't need it with top Vorsprung trim because, as we touched on before, uh, that optional pack is standard there. But otherwise, uh, that package of items will be available to you uh, on your chosen A5 Sportback for an extra payment of £2,700. So, what do you get? Well, with the Driver Assistance Pack Tour, your A5 will be embellished with a Level 2 style autonomous driving feature, adaptive cruise control with stop and go and traffic jam assist, and a clever efficiency tool that works with it, a predictive efficiency assistant. Plus, there are four camera-driven safety features. Now, we'll start with adaptive cruise control with stop and go and traffic jam assist. Now, this system is there to automatically keep your A5 a set distance behind the car in front on the highway and it'll warn you if you're getting too close to another vehicle and that'll be via a distance warning alert and it's able to automatically stop you and then start you off again if you come across a tailback. Uh, now the traffic jam assist bit also frees you up in slow to medium speed queues. It allows the car to automatically brake, accelerate and steer for you at speeds of up to 37 miles an hour. Uh, the predictive efficiency assistance system works with that setup and it regulates your Audi's speed for maximum efficiency and it also offers driving tips that could create fuel savings of up to 10%. Now we mentioned that the optional tour pack also had four camera safety features and they're there to make the difference between a near miss and a very bad day. Let's run through those for you. Now we'll start with a system that the English app brand calls Presense Rear and Basic and this protects you if you're just about to be hit from the rear by tensioning the front seat belts and by closing any open windows and of course the sunroof if that's been fitted. Plus activating the hazard flashes just before any predicted impact. Uh, there is also turn assist which automatically applies the brakes to prevent an accident if you're turning out of a junction and you haven't seen an oncoming car or bike. If only every car had that feature. Uh, other inclusions in the pack, they run to active lane assist. Now that's there to gently steer you back into your lane if you inadvertently drift out of it. And also a so-called collision avoidance assistant. Now that tweaks the steering to keep the car stable in an emergency manoeuvre. It's all very reassuring. At the time of this test in autumn 2020, Audi wasn't offering a TFSIE plug-in hybrid version of the A5 Sportback, but it can only be a matter of time before the company does. That kind of tech will be more significant for the next generation version of this model. For the time being, what the Ingolstadt brand wants to make more of a noise about is its latest MHEV mild hybrid engine technology, which has led to hybrid headlines surrounding this revised post-2019 era a5 Sportback model that might lead you to expect greater efficiency gains than are actually delivered. Audi's claim for the differences 12 volt MHEV or mild hybrid system makes is actually quite modest. A saving of 0.3 litres of fuel every 100 kilometres or 62 miles. Worthwhile certainly but you can keep the Prius comparisons on hold. A bigger efficiency change actually took place when this Mark II A5 design first saw the light of day back in 2016. Thanks to a stiffer, lighter, new generation MLB Evo chassis, the current generation model managed to weigh in up to 120 kilos less than its direct predecessor. That's a reduction equivalent to the weight saving you'd make if you asked a couple of your adult passengers to get out and walk. 
Mind you, all that did was return this Audi to somewhere near the class standard. Even now, it's still about 80 kilos heavier than a equivalent BMW 4 Series Grand Coupe. Uh, you could say the same about the MHEV engine tweaks. Just in case you haven't seen our driving experience section, we'll brief you on what uh, Audi's definition of mild hybrid tech actually means. A BAS, belt alternator starter generator, uh, that with the four cylinder engines, powers a 12 volt main electrical setup in which a compact lithium ion battery in the boot stores energy harvested via a KERS or kinetic energy recovery system. During braking, the BAS package can recover up to five kilowatts of power and feed it back into the battery. If the driver takes their foot off the accelerator at speeds between 34 and 99 miles an hour, the mild hybrid system will recuperate energy while the car rolls in idle or coasts with its engine automatically switched off. Uh, the belt alternator starter generator restarts the engine the next time the accelerator is depressed and it does so faster and more gently than a conventional starter. All of this you'll particularly notice at urban speeds where the engine start-stop system is cutting in and out. Uh, the start-stop range begins at just under 14 miles an hour, so you'll often find the car coasting up to the end of a traffic queue, a traffic light or a level crossing. All of which sounds good, but let's get to the WLTP rated fuel consumption and CO2 figures and see what all that technology actually delivers. Uh, starting with the 40 TFSI petrol variant we're trying here, this manages almost exactly the same figures recorded by the lesser 150 PS 35 TFSI petrol version, namely a combined cycle fuel return of 44.8 mpg and the CO2 reading of around 144 grams per kilometer. For reference, that's fractionally better better than a rival BMW 420i Grand Coupe, even with this Audi's greater weight, so that MHEV Tech is obviously making a difference somewhere. Uh, for completion, we'll also tell you that the figures for the 45 TFSA Quattro petrol version are rated at up to 35.3 uh, mpg and up to 183 grams per kilometer. The six-cylinder S5 diesel model gets the 48-volt MHEV system, which has a more sophisticated belt alternator starter generator package and can recover up to 8 kilowatts of power and feed it back to the battery. As a result, an S5 Sportback manages a combined cycle fuel return of up to 40.4 mpg and a CO2 reading of up to 183 grams per kilometer, which is pretty impressive for a sports hatch capable of getting to 62 in under 5 seconds. Finally, there's a top pet Petrol-powered RS5 Sportback, which of course makes you pay for your pleasures. Uh, it records 29.7 mpg and 215 grams per kilometer of CO2. Helping all versions of this A5 Sportback stay competitive in efficiency terms are a whole series of careful design features. Uh, for example, a slippery CD factor of 0.26 makes this one of the most aerodynamic models in the segment. Uh, this is something aided on 2-litre TDI variants by a controllable cool air inlet, a frame installed behind the radiator grill housing two blinds that close at low speeds and open at higher ones to improve air resistance. Whatever your A5 of choice, uh, magazine tests have pointed out that across the board, the efficiency figures we've quoted can be difficult to achieve in day-to-day -day motoring, but of course that is not an issue exclusive to Audi. Much will depend on the driver, hence the Ingolstadt brand's efforts with this car to help the person at the wheel to do more when it comes to frugality. An efficiency assist segment of the uh, center dash infotainment screen allows you to activate or deactivate some of the car's main frugality aids, uh, things like the intelligent coasting feature that we mentioned earlier. Uh, you can also activate general economy tips and what Audi calls predictive messaging. Uh, there is also an energy consumers readout in the instrument cluster and that shows you the effect that uh, say the air conditioning is having on the car's energy usage. Uh, beyond that, as usual with the company's models, uh, there is an efficiency setting on the drive select vehicle dynamic system which tweaks the air conditioning, uh, the gear shift timings and the throttle response for maximum frugality. Now, If you choose to use the individual drive select mode which allows you to tailor all your own preferred preferences, uh, you'll find that efficient is one of the three options that you can choose for the drive criteria setting. 
The MMI navigation system on this car has been programmed around what Audi calls predictive and efficient driving, and that means that it will adapt the drive demeanor of your car uh, based on things like speed limits and gradient changes. And if you specify the optional tour pack on this car, you'll find it can be even more proactively efficient thanks to the predictive efficiency assistance setup that comes as part of the pack's adaptive cruise assist system. Predictive efficiency assistant uh, really is very clever. It is constantly gathering navigation data, camera images, and feedback from the car's uh, car to x message system, which receives car swarm feedback from other similarly equipped vehicles. Using all this, the software can then contribute to a more economical driving style. For example, instructing you when to release the accelerator uh, before entering a curve or behind a slower vehicle, for example. Get onto the highway and with the adaptive cruise control system activated, efficiency assist will automatically make all the frugal driving adjustments for you. What else? Well, bear in mind that as with all modern diesel cars, the TDI versions of this one use an AdBlue fuel additive stored in a separate rear tank, and that'll need to be topped up as part of regular servicing. It's a 12-litre tank as standard, but you can pay £60 more at point of purchase to get a 24-litre version of that tank, which will last you rather longer. Uh, talking of maintenance, servicing your A5 Sportback should be no more taxing than is the case with one of the uh, company's smaller cars. Uh, as usual here with Audi models, there's a choice of either a fixed or a flexible servicing regime. Now the choice between those two is dependent on the extent of your likely annual mileage. The fixed service schedule is aimed at drivers covering fewer than 10,000 miles a year and it includes an oil change service every 9,000 miles or every year, plus an inspection service every 19,000 miles or every two years. Now if you cover more than 10,000 miles a year, then the flexible service schedule will be more appropriate, and that regime includes oil changes and inspection services at variable intervals of up to every 19,000 miles or every two years. Uh, whichever package you go for, you'll need to change the brake fluid after the first three years and then every two years thereafter. Uh, overall, maintenance costs can be kept down if you go for one of the prepaid servicing plans that you'll be offered at initial purchase. Uh, they can cover you for up to a maximum of three years and include an oil service and a major service too. You may also be interested to know that this car can even book its own service appointments via an Audi Connect safety and service system app, uh, as well as providing emergency calling and online roadside assistance. That feature can, at the appropriate time, uh, send a service request directly to your local dealer. Alternatively, you can sign up for Audi Service Request, which uses the onboard Wi-Fi to enable your car to communicate with your dealer. Uh, as your A5 nears the time when work's gonna be needed, uh, the diagnostics alert your nominated local Audi Center, who will then contact you to book in a convenient time. Another neat service that your dealer can offer you is the so-called Audi Cam system. Here, a technicians carrying out workshop inspections on your A5 can focus a handheld Audi Cam camera onto specific problems and accompany the image with verbal diagnosis to create footage that can then be sent to your computer or to your smartphone. Uh, that way, you'll always know precisely what work you're authorizing on your car. What else? Uh, well, let's talk tax. Uh, based on the CO2 figures we briefed you on earlier, the benefiting kind ratings for the mainstream 35 and 40 TFSI petrol and TDI diesel variants hover between 34 and 37%, depending on model spec and year. The S5 diesel is rated at 37% for the first three years of ownership. What else? Well, one small irritation is that in order to keep weight down, Audi only fits all A5 Sportbacks with a small 40 litre fuel tank. A proper sized 54 litre tank is a no cost option, so do make sure you ask for that. Onto residuals, uh, the A5 Sportback has always performed well in this regard and nothing's changed here. 
According to industry experts, CAP, a typical A5 Sportback 35 TDI, would, after three years and 36,000 miles, be worth 46 to 47% of its original value. The S5 TDI holds on to up to 51% of its value in the same time frame. Uh, both these figures are marginally better than you'd get from competing BMW and Mercedes models. As for insurance groupings, well, for the 35 TDI, uh, ratings start from Group 31E for sports spec, they rise to 33E for S-Line trim and 38E for Vorsprung spec. For the 40 TDI Quattro, it's Group 32E in sport form, 40E in S-Line trim and 41E in Vorsprung trim. S5 TDI ratings range between 45E and 47E. As for petrol power, well, for a base 35 TFSI, a rating start from Group 29E for sport spec, 31E for S-Line trim, and 36E for Vorsprung trim. For this 40 TFSI variant, they start from Group 31E for sport spec, uh, 35E for S-Line trim, or 40E for a Vorsprung model. For the 45 TFSI Quattro model, it's Group 42E or 43E. For the top RS5 Sportback, ratings range between 44E and 49E. Uh, we'll finish by covering the warranty. All cars in this class get three years of cover, but whereas BMW and Mercedes don't limit your mileage on that period, Audi rather meanly restricts you to 60,000 miles. Our optional extra cost packages can extend that cover to either four or five years and 75,000 or 95,000 miles respectively. Audi proved with the first generation A5 Sportback that there was room in the market for a premium badged mid-sized executive model with a fifth door and an added dose of charisma. Ingolstadt further refined that concept with the original version of this Mark II model and they've further embellished it again here bringing us a smarter, more efficient and more upmarket product. Now, whether the people who'll buy it will actually be Conquest customers is another issue entirely, of course. But uh, when you're offering cars to suit every conceivable market niche, you can never be sure of that. It still isn't the most rewarding contender in the class to drive, but then, given that Audi has stayed with a front-driven formula in a segment where a rear-driven format is expected, it was never going to be. Still, aided by the relatively light weight of that sophisticated MLB Evo platform, the engineers have achieved quite a lot in that regard, and they would have got even closer to the class standard had they delivered a more fearsome steering setup. Are there other issues? Uh, well, we're not sure that deleting the MMI infotainment system's lower controller and reverting instead to a touchscreen format is really a forward step. And we would like to have seen the much trumpeted MHEV mild hybrid tech delivering slightly more of an efficiency gain than it actually does. There is really not much else to fault here though. Uh, this A5 is fully conversant with a kind of high-tech design, cutting edge connectivity and faultless cabin quality that its target mid-sized executive market sector likes to expect. So it stacks up in the showroom just as well as it does on the balance sheet with running cost returns that match or exceed the highest segment standards. In short, your accountant will approve. In summary, this is exactly what Ingolstadt promised, an intelligent evolution of a car that stacks up on paper and can credibly manage to seat up to five people. It's all enough to make this A5 Sportback a hard option to ignore if you fit its target market. For a relatively small premium over an A4, it delivers for you a more stylish, yet still pretty practical package. One thing's certain, here's another very desirable Audi.